Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and today we're going to talk about why induction style skimmers like this Aqua Sea EV120 are basically dead. So to begin with, what is an induction style skimmer? Basically, it uses a jet of water shooting down into the skimmer to create the foam. Very much like if you were to put your thumb over the end of a hose and spray it into the bucket, you'd get foam. Well, an induction style skimmer works pretty much the same way. We'll get a little more into how these work in a minute, but they're super simple, super reliable. So why isn't anybody using them or really even selling them anymore? So to begin with, I think we should hitch a ride with Doc Brown and go back to the 1980s. Seems ironic to go back to when the movie was made, but that's really the time period we're talking about. Hurry Doc, we gotta go! In the early days of skimmers, most skimmers were air driven. Basically, they were a tower, with an air pump and an air stone that created the foam that went up. As time progressed, two different technologies really sprouted. We had induction style skimmers, like this Aqua C, and then we had the needle wheel skimmer, like most of you are gonna be familiar with today. Now, the needle wheel skimmers are different from the induction in that they use a pump with a little wheel that looks a bit like a brush that spins, sucks air in, breaks up the air bubbles, and sends it up through the skimmer. So now let's get Doc Brown to take us to the late 1990s. Hurry Doc, we gotta go! This is the time period I was learning to drive. This is what a car looked like back then. Actually, that's my current car today and it's a 2001. Not far off though, but pretty cool. At this time, ETSS was building high-end induction style skimmers that were doing really well against the new technology, which was the needle wheel style skimmers. But there were problems with these ETSS induction style skimmers. They had a big tower on them, they took up a lot of space, and they weren't cheap. Now don't get me wrong, I've never been able to use an ETSS skimmer, they're a little before my time, but they do have their cult following. In fact, they go for really good money on eBay. So if you find one, it's a real cool skimmer that you ought to hold on to or sell to the right person. And then along came a little company called Aqua C. Aqua C had a new idea for the induction style skimmer. They try to make it a little cheaper and a little better and a little more compact. And who can argue with that logic? So what set the Aqua C skimmers apart from the ETSS skimmers? Well, it's basically this little 90. Instead of the expensive, hard to produce tower, they've got a 90 with a little water injector in the end. Now, by all accounts, the ETSS skimmers are great and yet many people like me, still swear by the Aqua Sea Skimmers. But clearly, this was much cheaper to produce. So when talking about induction style skimmers, I'm gonna stick with the Aqua Sea because I never owned an ETSS and I've never had a chance to play with one. But these are super simple, super easy to use skimmers. Basically, the way it works is water flows through here, you've got a little jet, it goes down into your skimmer and just like that analogy I gave earlier with the water hose, it sprays water in and creates the bubbles. You've got an air inlet here. This is where it sucks the air in because it's got to get the air from somewhere and it just sucks it and pulls it and it actually sucks it. So as the water goes in, it creates a draw and the air is pulled in. We've got a, a high quality gate valve to adjust the water level in the skimmer, which allowed you to adjust the foam level here. And you have a nice, simple, easy cup. The skimmers are basically bulletproof because other than cracking in the plastic, 
You've got nothing to go wrong. In 2006, I bought this Aqua C EV120 for my first frag system. And I bought it because in 2006, the Aqua C induction style skimmer had one of the best reputations on the market. Remember at this time, the needle wheel, still, needle wheel style skimmers were still new technology. They were somewhat unreliable and they weren't nearly as efficient as they are today. There were some incredibly high end brands like Euro Reef that were killing it, but there was also a lot of junk on the market. So if you wanted something that was going to work and you wanted something that was going to be going to pull the gunk out of the water, it was tough to beat an Aqua C. So when I set mine up, that's what I bought. At this time, there were two basic styles of Aqua C skimmers on the market. We had the EV, which was basically made for inside a sump or outside of a sump, but basically something you'd put under a tank and they had their hang on back remoras and urchins. Basically, the remoras and urchins work the same way. And guess what? In 2006, I was running an Aqua C remora on the 29 gallon nano. And for me, at this point in time, basically time stopped. These skimmers just worked. I didn't have to replace them. That's the reason this skimmer is sitting here today. It's also the reason this skimmer that I bought in 2006 is currently running on my 24 gallon nano and it's been running for 13 years, almost continuously. How many aquarium products can say that? So now we have a skimmer that's incredibly reliable. It does a pretty darn good job of pulling gunk. And I will say that the EVs do a much better job pulling gunk than the hang on backs. But you know what? The hang on backs still do the job. At least I've been able to tune them to make them work effectively. So with such a cool design that lasts so long and actually works, why aren't they around today? So first, let's talk about the hang on back skimmers. There's a lot of people who bought these and had a hard time tuning them. They just couldn't pull the gunk that they wanted to. They were also quickly outclassed by a lot of their needle wheel style competition. It's just the march of technology. The needle wheels worked a lot better in a hang on back style skimmer than an injection style for a lot of people. For me personally, I was able to get good enough results that I was happy with it and stuck with it. But enough people were disappointed in the way they worked that they switched or upgraded to a hang on back that was a needle wheel style. But maybe the biggest problem with the Aqua C Remora, the hang on back Aqua C, was it was pretty darn loud. If I have any complaints about that skimmer today, it's that I can hear it. It's in my kitchen and it's definitely the loudest part of the tank. So of course, as time has gone on, even the hang on back skimmer itself has kind of started to go the way of the Dodo. Most people these days are running all in one style tanks with the baffling so that you can put the skimmer in the tank without actually seeing it. The hang on back style skimmers have really just kind of gone away for in tank mounted small compact skimmers. So while it seems to make perfect sense as to why the hang on back style Aqua C is no longer a thing, why isn't the Aqua C EV, which mounted in the sump or external, still king. I mean, we still do that. So in my opinion, the biggest reason has to be cost. So this Aqua C EV120 kind of cost the price new of a competitor's needle wheel style skimmer. The problem is it didn't come with a pump. For this skimmer, you would order it up you would buy it, but at the same time, you had to pick a pump to go with it. Now, Aqua C at the time was recommending a Mag 5, which was selling for like 75, 80 bucks. Well, when you compare this to an equivalent needle wheel style skimmer, it was significantly more expensive. When you gotta add 
$80 onto your skimmer. That really affects that cost analysis when you're building your system. And then of course, the problem only got worse when you started looking at the big skimmers, like my Aqua C EV1000 I'm currently using on my reef tank. This is a skimmer that costs roughly $700 new. But that's not the end of the story. You had to buy a pump for this. And the pump that Aqua C recommended for it was the Awaki 70 RLT. This is a pump that today retails for about $400. Now, it's still even at $1,100 total, not a terrible price to pay for an externally mounted skimmer that can do up to a thousand gallon system. That's really not crazy money. But for a lot of people, running that massive pump externally was kind of a deal breaker. Plus, the amount of energy that it takes to run a big pump like that is a lot just to run a skimmer. So Aqua C had some big advantages. You could mount these EVs internally or externally. And even today, good external mounted skimmers are kind of a rare breed. And Aqua C was doing that early on. But of course, Aqua C had a patent. Aqua C's patent was on this little injection nozzle right here. It doesn't look like much, but basically it speeds the water up from the pump and turns it into a jet as it goes into the skimmer. Now this is what made the Aqua C so cool. But since they had a patent on it, Aqua C was the only one who could use this technology. And Aqua C didn't develop this technology any further. So while the entire industry basically focused on needle wheel style skimmers, Aqua C continued to sell the same basic skimmer. In fact, you can buy the last model of Aqua C EV120 skimmer like this boy right here, and it'll be pretty much identical to the first one other than some really minor changes. So why don't these skimmers exist anymore? Well, in my opinion, they didn't develop the technology. I can't imagine that this square body is the most efficient foam building body. I think a round one would be less likely to pop those bubbles that we work so hard to make. The pumps they take were huge. They use a ton of energy and they're kind of loud. So while early on, Aqua C maybe had one of the best skimmers on the market. The needle wheel style skimmers caught up and maybe even surpassed it in a lot of ways. So why do people like me and so many of you out there swear by Aqua C skimmers? First, they're reliable like a wood stove. If you keep them clean, the only thing that really goes wrong with them is the plastics have a tendency to crack. And it seems like it's more of a smaller body skimmer like this Aqua C EV120 that used thinner acrylic than it was for the bigger, thicker ones. So on mine, I cracked the plastic here one day when I tightened down the air nozzle too tight. You can say that's my fault, but it was pretty easy to do. They were also notorious for cracking the cup, which wasn't such a big deal because the parts were reasonably priced and easy to get. The next reason people like me swear by these skimmers is efficiency. Now, from an energy use perspective, these skimmers really are pretty inefficient. But when it comes to water processing, these skimmers kill it. My Aqua C EV1000 is recommended to use an Awaki 70 RLT. This is a pump that puts out 1,500 gallons per hour. And I know from personal experience, you can mate a bigger pump with it and push even more water through than that. Meaning that even my 450 gallon tank can get three, four, five, six times turnover in an hour. It's 
unbelievable the amounts of water you can run through one of these skimmers. It's incredible. So people like me, we love these skimmers because we can run the entire tank's volume through one multiple times an hour. And next up is ease of use and customizability. Now these skimmers are super easy to use. In their base form, you've got two real adjustments. You've got your airflow and you got the water level in the body itself. And that's it. But you can overdrive these skimmers by running a bigger pump, which I've personally done and had great success. Now I've heard people say don't do it, but in my experience, it works amazingly to run a much bigger pump on these skimmers than is intended. Also, they're made of high quality acrylic. You can run ozone into them. They're really cool skimmers. You can run them in the sump. You can run them externally and they work beautifully and they're not really going to be affected by the water level of the sump. So if you run it internal, really as long as you're below this level, you're going to be fine. And externally, as long as you can drain back into the sump, it will not care what level you mount it at. The good news is Aquacy was recently acquired by Cobalt Aquatics. And when I got to talk to them at Reefstock 2019, they were in development on a new Aquacy EV, which is very similar to this, which is cool. And they're developing new Aquacy skimmers, which is way cool. So fingers crossed that we'll see new Aqua C skimmers in the future. But if you want one today, in June of 2019, they're becoming really hard to find new. A quick Google search shows that most companies are out of stock. When I went to my local store in Greeley Animal Attractions, where I bought my skimmer originally, they did still have a couple in stock and they had a couple of used ones. So if you're looking for an Aquacy EV skimmer, now's probably the time to buy. So today I think we live in a world where new and flashy is king. The new products get all the press and old reliable products like the Aquacy tend to go the way of the dodo, even when they have so many redeeming features. Thank you for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.